Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking through something called the cardiac output. I'm going to talk about how you can actually calculate this value, what we mean by it, the factors that influence it, and then in the bottom left you can see that I have a table of data. I'm going to talk about a real exam question uh, where you're asked to calculate cardiac output. I'm going to show you how, given this particular data in the bottom, you're able to do that. So let's start with the definition. So the definition of cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped by one ventricle of the heart in one minute. Ventricles being the two largest chambers in, of the four that make up the heart. So let me just highlight two crucial things there in that definition. The first being volume, because that's going to be important in the calculating this uh, numerical value. And the idea at the end, in one minute, suggests that there's a time component to this. So what we've got, cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped by one ventricle of the heart in one whole minute. So unsurprisingly, when we look at the units, and let's make a note of the units for this particular value, the units for cardiac output are decimeter cubed per minute. Again, if you look at the units, you can figure decimeter cube relates to the idea of volume and per minute, suggestive of there being a time component to this. So there are two factors that you need to know to be able to calculate this cardiac output. So let's make a note of these factors here. There are two factors that you need to be aware of. One of them, let's put the first, is something called heart rate. Now the heart rate is the number of beats of the heart. Now I'm going to put here per unit time. Normally we talk about the heart rate in 60 seconds, so number of beats per minute. But depending on the question, you might just need to know it in terms of just the unit time. So two factors that influence cardiac output. One is the heart rate. And the second is something called the stroke volume. Now the stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped out with every beat. So let's just make a note of that. The volume of blood pumped out, I'll just put in one beat. So with those two factors we're able to work out the cardiac output. And let's talk about how they relate to one another in terms of a formula. Let's put a formula to this. So let's say that cardiac output is CO, cardiac output. That would equal the heart rate, HR, we're going to use that there, H and R, and we'll use S and V for stroke volume, times SV, stroke volume. So there's our formula to work out cardiac output. We do the heart rate times the stroke volume. So if the stroke volume tells you how much blood you're pushing out of the heart in a single beat, and then the heart rate tells you how many beats you have per unit time, that essentially is what our cardiac output is. That's all it is. So let's look at this table of data that we have, and let's put it into some context in terms of exam questions. So we've got time down the side in seconds, between 0 and 0.7, We've got a volume of blood in centimetre cubed. We're going to say that this is in the, and I'll just make a little note above the table, this is the right ventricle that we're going to talk about here. It's always important in an exam question to make sure you're, if you're given data, to see what part of the heart they're referring to. Are they talking about the left side of the heart or the right side of the heart? But we're going to use this table to get all three values. We're going to get the heart rate, the stroke volume, and the cardiac output from this table of data. So let's get the stroke volume first of all, because we can see that in one cycle, so we've got volume of blood here at the top, 125. If we look down this table, 125 at the bottom, that suggests we've gone through one full cycle, if you like. So that's one full beat. So if we look here, just highlighting, we can see that the volume of blood has increased in the ventricles. So that's when the ventricles filling with blood, most likely in atrial 
systole or when the atria contract. So our highest value is 148 centimetre cubed. And our lowest value is here, the 55. So if we were to do 148 minus 55, that would give us a stroke volume of 93. And remember the unit's centimetre cubed. So just from that table of data there, all we've done is the difference between these two values here, the biggest number and the smallest number within that table, and that gives us a stroke volume of 93 centimetre cube. Now let's look at heart rate. Heart rate is, as it says there, the number of beats per unit time. So we can see one full cycle, so for example one beat, you could write one beat, equates to 0.7 seconds. But if we're wanting to work out this per minute, then what we need to do is a ratio and look at this in terms of 60 seconds. Now, if I look at, I'm sure uh, people watching this video will have calculated ratios maybe in their mathematics lessons, but just one quick way I do it is I think about what do I have to do on this side to go from 0.75 or 0.7, sorry, up to 60. So if I take 0.7, if I divide it by 0.7, it would become 1, and then I times it by 60. So if I do the same on the other side, if I take 1, if I divide that by 0.7, now if I do that, on the calculator, the number comes out as a very big digit. 1.4285714, so I'm going to round this up and call it 1.429. Okay, so if I do 1 divided by 0 0.7, I get 1.429. And then if I take that, 1.429, and times that by 60, then what I get is a value of 85.74. And that's beats. So that would be my heart rate. So I can put in brackets here. H R. So now I have heart rate, I've got stroke volume. So if I simply just take these two values and I'll write the number over here. To get my cardiac output, all I have to do is take 93 and times that by 85.74. And my cardiac output comes out as 7,970, apologies, 73.82. And remember the units. Decimeter cubed per minute. Now, obviously, the number that you get if you were to calculate this might be different slightly depending on where you round when you're calculating out the heart rate. But in a nutshell, that's all you have to do. So, just to recap cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped by one ventricle of the heart in one minute. Depends on two key things heart rate and stroke volume. If you know the volume of blood pumped out in a single beat, but you know per unit time how many beats you have, then essentially you can calculate this value. And given a table of data, if you're just, if you look really closely, look for the highest value, the lowest value, you'll be able to get stroke volume. Pay attention particularly to the, I've just circled it on the bottom left there, the time scale that you're given. They don't often give you it per minute. You have to use, normally use a ratio to calculate that. And then you simply time stroke volume and heart rate together and you get value for cardiac output. 7973 does look quite high, but I can assure you that is the correct number. Okay, hope that helps.